Welcome back everybody. This is Workshop 1776. I'm Jack. Today we're drinking St. Archer's Blonde Ale. We're building this. All right, so this project is a wine box, uh, or like a wine bottle box that holds two glasses. Um, it's for a going away gift from someone from my old command. So I made this uh, entire thing out of walnut, and I used uh, epoxy for this portion in the front right here, um, just so it's like a somewhat opaque, um, like sight glass so you can kind of see what's inside. All right, right here I'm just uh, making sure that all of the sides of the boxes are the same width. And um, now I'm going to put a 45 degree bevel onto it because I want to make uh, mitered edges instead of uh, butt joints. The first mistake I made right here is I shouldn't use a crosscut sled because the piece that was getting cut off was so small that I had to turn off the blade, let it stop. Um, every time I wanted to make another cut because um, that little piece was too small to remove while the blade was while the blade was moving. But once I got them all cut, I was able to put them together. The box fit fine. Now I'm just routing out a little channel in the back uh, for the back panel that's fit into, so you won't see it. All right, so this is a great trick. Uh, I'm sure most of you have seen it before, the old blue tape, painter's tape trick. So when it's tricky to glue up uh, miter joints like this because if you put too much pressure, it'll want to slide on you. Uh, so if you put them all on a strip of blue tape, glue it all up, and then just roll it up like I do right here, um, the tape acts like a clamp. And then I just used, a, I couldn't find a straw, a little plastic straw to clean up the uh, glue squeeze out. So I just used an old chisel. And then I got my little uh, woodpecker's little mini square here, which I use this thing every day uh, to make sure that all of the uh, angles were, or all the corners were at 90 degrees and worked out. Everything ended up being perfectly flush, or perfectly square on the first first go, which is extremely, luck extremely lucky. Here I got a little ahead of myself and put in the back panel. Uh, well, half of the back panel, which was ended up being a mistake. I ended up having to take it out later because I needed to uh, route grooves for the uh, partitions, like the divider sections, and I wouldn't have been able to do that with the back panel inside. All right, now I'm just using a marker to draw out basically what I want to cut out uh, and fill with epoxy. <clears throat> now I'm just cutting out on the bandsaw, sanding off the uh, marker lines. And then uh, trying to clean up the bandsaw marks on the uh, on the end grain right there. All right, so uh, I'm still using melamine boards and Tyvek tape. Um, I tried something new with the form. What I'm doing now is just I got a board that was big enough to house where I was gonna pour the epoxy. Ended up using hot glue um, just to try it out, and see if it worked. Um, but it worked really well. The hot glue wasn't the problem. I had to pour this mold three times because I, I would say I rushed it, um, but I also was experimenting on how to on how to do it. And then um, I reached out to Total Boat and um, um, and said that uh, I should have used their um, thick set epoxy, <coughs> their thick set epoxy, instead of just their standard um, two to one or two to one, three to one. use their standard like three to one epoxy. Um, I guess that the, the thick set has a lot longer open time before it starts to harden and that allows the bubbles to pop. All right, so I started the epoxy pour. Um, I don't think I filmed the, I sealed the underside of where the walnut met the Tyvek or met the melamine board with hot glue. So even if it seeped all the way up to, uh, all the way underneath the wood, it wouldn't have gone past that and wouldn't have lost any epoxy. All right, so right there, I that was my first big mistake. Um, so I've never used a torch successfully, I guess you would say, um, to pop bubbles. Like, I it's it's very very quick. You don't need to hold it on there very long. And if bubbles keep coming up from a certain area, 
um, that's a bigger problem and the torch isn't gonna fix it. What I ended up doing was superheating that portion of the epoxy and it um, ended up coming out super uneven and uh, really messed up. It was totally my fault. I shouldn't have, I spent a lot of time with the torch on that one area trying to pop all the bubbles and uh, it, was a, it was a big mistake. So I ended up, like I said, I ended up having to pour this three times until I got something I was comfortable with. <laughs> so I, uh, the overpour got onto the brick right there. So I ended up having to take a, a shim and smack it underneath the brick to get it off of the, uh, and I, most of the brick stayed on. The brick actually broke before the epoxy let it go. Yeah, you can see right there how high, how raised that one section is. It's because I superheated the epoxy and it ended up just like coming out super uneven. All right, so now I'm just trying to fill in the bubbles with, um, I, I just mixed up one little tiny amount of uh, epoxy and I'm just trying to fill it, I poured it over all the like cavities, trying to fill in the bubbles with just straight to clear epoxy. Uh, I was using the sander uh, on high just to like, agitate the mold or agitate the epoxy just to try to force some of the bubbles to the surface. Um, didn't work very well. I've seen that what you should do is take the, the sanding pad off um, so it's just like the uh, like the Velcro or whatever and then put it on there instead of using it upside down. All right, well that was drying. I wanted to make sure that the wine bottle fit um, and now I'm gonna start routing out the channels for the divider section. And I made this box just barely large enough to fit everything in it. Um, I probably, in hindsight, I would have made it a little bit taller and a little bit wider just for a little more wiggle room, but um, I didn't want the glass to be bouncing around inside. So the uh, straight bit that I used in my router was exactly the same width as the um, walnut that I purchased, which is a great thing because it ensured a really tight fit. Um, but I needed to, once I got the uh, channels routed, I ended up having to take uh, sandpaper for quite a long time and just widen it a little bit in order for me to be able to like slide it in. All right, so now I'm, I'm reinstalling the two uh, back panels. Using the old brick clamp. All right, so the plan here was to use, so I originally wanted to do these shavings out of Purple Heart, um, which I have some off cuts of, but um, my hand plane isn't very sharp and I didn't end up having enough Purple Heart to do what I, what I ended up doing with this anyway, so I just used Pine, which looks okay because it still gets the, uh, like the dark walnut with the light uh, colored shavings, it's good contrast. Uh, it looks pretty cool once the, um, the like front door is shut and you can just kind of see uh, through the epoxy into what's inside the box. All right, so this is attempt number two at fixing the epoxy. Oh wait, no it's not, this is still attempt number one. All right, so now I'm just measuring the top. Um, I left it oversized on purpose, um, which is something I'm starting to do a lot more. I realize a lot of like more experienced woodworkers do that. They purposefully give themselves an inch or two of space um, just to, so they can sneak up on the perfect fit instead of um, cutting it right at the exact dimension and then being like, you know, having to take some off or whatever because you can't put wood back, right? So I uh, just left it a little large and then I trimmed it to length once I, once I was trimmed it to length once I was done. So at this point, um, I was pretty happy with it. Uh, I'm my wife tells me all the time that I'll be unhappy. She'll, I'm unhappy with like a piece of. Um, like a piece of work that I've made or whatever and she's she tells me all the time no one's even gonna notice that you're only noticing it because you're the one who made it um, and that's exactly what happened in this case but reversed so I was I had noticed that the bubbles had formed around the seams where the epoxy met the walnut uh, but I was like I'm probably the only one who's gonna even care about that and um, when my wife got home she told me that um, she didn't like how they looked either so she's officially quality quality control for Workshop 1776. And um, so <laughs> she said that I should probably redo that part. So right here I'm, I'm, I'm you know, applying, putting like the finish on it and everything, um, thinking that I was good to go. And you'll see where I completely scrap the, not completely scrap, but I cut the epoxy off and I try to pour it again. 
but it's, it's really good to have uh, a second pair of eyes, especially as someone who's not helping you create it, um, just to get like that, basically like a consumer's opinion. It's kind of hard to do when you're the one making it. <clears throat> right here, I wanted to route like a little chamfer on the underside of the like the door part, which this <laughs> this part comes back to bite me uh, during the next epoxy board. I reached out to my buddy on Instagram, uh, Homegrown Creations. Uh, he's from Arizona. He does a lot of the like half wood, half epoxy pours and stuff like that. And he told me that I should um, like seal the end grain basically with just a clear coat of epoxy, let it dry, and then do the pour, and that should stop the air from escaping uh, from inside the wood into the epoxy pour. So that's what I'm doing right here. I just used a paintbrush um, and just one, one pump of each just to get a small batch. Why is there a helicopter? <laughs> All right, so since I had already trimmed the lid to length, uh, I, needed, I didn't have any excess I wanted to cut off, so uh, I just lined up the box next to the mold and then lined up the top and bottom with the edge of the box. That way I had the same amount of epoxy I was pouring into it. Um, on this pour I decided to add a little bit of pigment to it. Uh, I used the titanium pigment. Uh, I'll link it in the description. Alright, so this is, remember when I said that that chamfer came back to bite me? It was right there. So that epoxy pour ended up going all over everywhere because I forgot that I had put that chamfer on the underside of both of those pieces. So there was just a slow, steady stream of epoxy seeping between the mold, seeping between the mold and the wood all the way out the back because I forgot to seal it. So um, I ended up just taking all the pieces off, cleaning them off as much as I could, and then uh, letting the epoxy go all over my uh, silicone project mat from Rockler, uh, which was fine because once it dried in the morning, I just cracked everything off and threw it in the garbage. Um, but the mat's completely fine. And I didn't make a huge mess all over my table and then have to sand down the table or anything like that. So this mold, this epoxy pour right here is actually pour number three, um, which I went hard in the paint, sealing up, and I used bricks on both sides, clamps on both sides, extra tape. I did everything I could just to make sure I wasn't gonna let it like leak out the sides. I also put a ton of hot glue in that little chamfer chamber that I, chamfer chamber that I made, chamfer chamber, um, just so I'd stop the, uh, the flow of epoxy. And this worked out great. Um, I still ended up having bubbles because like I said, I'm using the wrong kind of epoxy for this, uh, but it wasn't so much that it was a big deal. Uh, and I ended up sealing up almost all of them with a quick little uh, batch that I mixed up. This was a pain to get off the mold though. Best way I found is to just find a little like shim and just a mallet and tap tap it up and it just pops it open, pops it right up. So um, you can just mix up a little little amount of epoxy and um, just try to fill any of the voids that come that come up from like air escaping from the wood or uh, anywhere the epoxy didn't get to. Uh, I ended up doing this to both sides just because each side had uh, small holes. There were some uh, uneven patches too that I just tried to fill as much as possible. That mat uh, from Rockler is awesome. It's, it makes cleanup so much easier. I'm just marking out the hinges. I uh, got the lid situated the way I like it, and then use a little bit of painter's tape just to lock it down so it wouldn't slide around on me while I was trying to mark where the holes needed to be. Um, I just I held the hinge up, and then I took a punch and just set it in the in the center and just made like a little indentation enough to where I could see it for the drill. And then uh, these are just like little tiny brass hinges with little tiny brass screws that I got from Home Depot. They're like two bucks, I think. Um, from Home Depot, but because they're so small, I ended up just using a hand screwdriver because I didn't want to like strip them out with the drill. Okay, so I've previously used rare earth magnets to serve as a like somewhat of a latch uh, for a box I made in the past. There's a, a little uh, pistol box that I had made, um, and I ran into a lot of problems with this one for some reason. 
Um, I just did two magnets, one on the top, one on the bottom. I used a, a drill that was, or I used a drill bit that was just slightly larger than the magnet itself. And then I put magnet, or I put uh, screws into the door portion, um, thinking that that would be enough once I shut it that the magnet would adhere to the screw and it would keep it shut. Um, for some reason, the magnets were all but demagnetized once I got them into the box. Um, so what I ended up doing was taking the um, the screw that I had put inside or into the the screw that I put on the door portion, and then I glued a magnet uh, to that <laughs> to the screw, so it was magnet to magnet contact. So there's a magnet on the door, and then there's a magnet um, on the corner of the box as well. Um, just so there's, it's basically twice the magnetic power or whatever that's called. Um, that's the only way I could figure out to make it work. Um, for some reason, it just didn't. The screws didn't want to seem to magnetize to the magnets once they were inside the box. I, I don't understand why. So if, if you guys know why that is the case, please let me know because that was that took almost all of my day trying to figure that out. So um, yeah, what we went with was the the magnet glued to the glued to the screw and it worked. Works great. All right, so here I'm just putting in those shavings that we uh, spent so much time making. Uh, for basically they're packing peanuts, but they're you know made out of wood. So I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm super pumped on it. I, I really like how you can see through the epoxy just enough to see that there's something inside the box, um, but it's not it's not so um, transparent that you can see exactly what it is. But yeah, so I, there was a lot of lessons learned on this project. There was, I kept getting ahead of myself in certain areas and then in other areas I wasn't, I, I wasn't familiar enough with what I was doing to not make a huge mistake. <laughs> but that's okay, that's what we're here for. Hopefully you guys will learn from the mistakes I made on this and uh, you guys can go forward and make something even better. But overall I'm super happy with it. Uh, the person who I made it for is also super happy with it. So. Uh, so as far as the channel is doing, we're this has been crazy. So I can't remember where we were at last time, but uh, as of this morning, we hit 1,200 subscribers. So thank you to each and every one of you. Uh, that's that's amazing. So we we keep just going up and up in subscribers and watch time and stuff like that. So um, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad you guys like the videos. We got a lot more coming. I have a few more lined up that I'm just trying to. <laughs> get edited so we can upload. But yeah, I think that'll do it for the, this episode. We gotta do beer review. St. Archer Brewing Company, Blonde Ale. Ugh. Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm.